4-Ministry of Christ. Conclusion of its Ministry. In the course of the study of the completion of the ministry of Christ, we are going to learn what Jesus was teaching the disciples, that his kingdom was not an earthly kingdom. Because until then the disciples also believed in a phrase that all those multitudes, who accompanied Jesus, acclaimed. Jesus, King of the Jews. Jesus began to reveal to the disciples that his kingdom was a spiritual kingdom, that is, an eternal kingdom, where we will have an incorruptible body. Jesus drew attention to us to value the things that remain, not the things of the earth that are fleeting. He began to show that he would have to die so we could have eternal life. But they did not understand what Jesus said, even when it came time for the death of our Lord, they were totally disappointed. They understood only all that Jesus had said after the resurrection of our Lord. And he took the twelve with him, and said unto them, Behold, we go up to Jerusalem, and every one that is written in the prophets shall be fulfilled in the Son of Man. For it is to be given to the Gentiles, and mocked, reviled, and spit upon. And if he smite him, they shall kill him. And on the third day he shall rise again. And they understood none of this, and this word was hid from them, not perceiving what was spoken to them. Matthew 16, 13-20 In the course of Christ's ministry, we divide into four parts, and we are in the fourth part of what we call the closure of Christ's ministry. We are now beginning to speak of the closure, in the previous paragraph we speak of the difference of purpose of the kingdom that was being proclaimed by the Lord Jesus. When he spoke of the kingdom, he was speaking of the spiritual kingdom, but people knew nothing of the spiritual kingdom. Jesus began to clarify in a somewhat shy way, that is, to clarify slowly, so that these revelations did not provoke shock of opinions. But in this paragraph, which the Bible calls Peter's Confession, Jesus begins with a question, which inevitably comes to a simple but obvious answer. What do people who come in contact with you think about me, or who I am? The disciples readily said, that people thought Jesus was John the Baptist, Jeremiah, Elijah, or one of the prophets. And Jesus decided to ask them and you, who do you think I am? And Peter was the only one who had the right answer. Lord you are the Christ, the Son of the God living. Jesus said to Peter, you have said well that I am the Son of the God living. For who revealed to you is not, a human being of flesh and blood, but the Holy Spirit. And Jesus complimenting said to Peter you are Peter, and on this stone I will build my church. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be turned off in heaven. Peter at that moment was receiving a very great responsibility, and a very great authority, which he did not have a vision, of the greatness of this mission, and that only after the resurrection of our Lord Jesus, which he understood, the function of this responsibility, and of this authority which he, Peter, had just received from the Lord Jesus. The disciples should take their crosses. And Jesus said to his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself, and take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world, if he loses his soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels. And he shall give every man according to his works. Verily I say unto you, there are some of them that stand here, who shall not taste of death until they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Matthew 17, 1-7 As we are studying the kingdom of God, and we already know that the kingdom of God is spiritual, and that we also have two bodies, a natural body matter, and another spiritual body transfigured. Jesus was concerned to present three of his disciples, Peter, James and John. His body transfigured into a spiritual body, because the disciples needed to know what a spiritual body would be like. Then Jesus transfigured himself and his natural body became a body of light, his face shone like the sun, his white garments also shone, a luminous form. The disciples were filled with fear when they saw that not only Jesus had a luminous body, but also Moses and Elijah, who presented themselves with Jesus with spiritual bodies. 
While the disciples admired that vision, a luminous cloud enveloped them, and in the midst of this cloud a loud voice was heard saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I have pleasure. Listen to him. He said, Let no man see this vision until the Son of Man is raised from the dead. Then these three disciples became three witnesses that the kingdom of God is spiritual and that we also each have their own spiritual body, like Moses, Elijah. Sobra o Google trade utur communidad seller lar sobra o Google privacidad eter message den our feedback. Jesus touching them awoke them, and calling them to the reality in which they were living. Senhor, eu dou o meu louvor Minha vida, minha adoração Sei que Ele está pronto a me ouvir Vou abrir meu coração Pois não vem aqui só pra pedir Pois eu quero me entregar O seu nome exaltar Exaltar Senhor Como altar, hoje eu quero lhe dizer que a minha vida sem o Senhor não dá. Derrama sobre mim a tua unção, tens que a vida como altar. Hoje eu quero lhe dizer. Sem o Senhor não dá Só pra pedir Hoje eu quero me entregar O seu nome exaltar Exaltar Senhor Hoje eu quero lhe dizer Que a minha vida sem o Senhor não dá Derrama sobre mim A tua unção tens Minha vida como altar Hoje eu quero lhe dizer a minha vida sem o Senhor não dá, não dá, não dá, não dá, sem o Senhor não dá, não dá, não dá, não dá, sem o Senhor não dá, não dá, não dá, não dá, sem o Senhor. O 
Senhor. 